All right, welcome back everybody. So this week I'm going to answer the multitude of questions I've gotten about why I like vinyl sealer under water base. What are the pluses and minuses and are there any adhesion issues or things you should worry about? Let's get to it. All right, welcome back everyone. So this week, I'm gonna answer some questions that I keep continually getting about vinyl sealer and water base and why I like vinyl sealer over uh, water base primers and a shellac base primer. So I'm gonna break this up into two categories and talk about each one. The first category is if you're in a refinishing situation and the second category is if you're in a white wood application and I'm gonna talk about both. So first off, is there adhesion problems? No. I have found no adhesion problems using a vinyl sealer under water-based products, okay? Um, also, vinyl sealer is completely compatible with every solvent-based finish that I know of, too, even a, 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 a 2K poly, but I don't really know why you'd want to use a vinyl sealer in that, in that situation. You'd be better off using a 2K um, sealer. Uh, just because of the higher solid content, but you can do it. I know for sure that it works under all of these products that I'm going to list out here. So it works under the CIC water base exceptionally well. It works underneath the Kim Aqua. It works underneath the Sayer Lac. It works underneath the Malaysi 2K water base. It works under the Aguilante and it works under the Magnamax H2O. Okay, it works under all of those, all of those products. And Sherwin Williams actually recommends the vinyl sealer if you're shooting MDF and the Kim Aqua on top of it. I talked to the um, facilities manager about that when I was discussing the uh, trying to get the Kim Aqua again. Um, okay, so in a refinished situation, why do I like it better um, than other primers or sealers? The reasons I do is because it can be tinted across all ranges. So that's one plus for it. It also adheres to all of the surfaces. Sanded though. There's some people out there that thinks that, that you don't have to sand when you're doing a refinish. Um, you're, that's a recipe for disaster. And I've even seen some big popular, um, paint YouTubers that suggest that they don't sand before they do a refinish. Uh, I don't agree with that based on the testing that I've done, um, with the UV coating. Now we know that this will stick to a UV coating. I know it sticks to 2k polyurethanes. And I know that it sticks to conversion varnishes and lacquers. No issue, as long as you sand it. Now, speaking of sanding, we're gonna do an interesting experiment where we take the UV coating that I always do because it tends to be the most difficult one to have adhesion to for whatever reason. And I think a lot of it's because it's like a really glossy um, sur surface. And we're gonna take a 320 scuff pad and scuff it. We're gonna take 220 sandpaper, 180 and 150, and we're gonna see if a heavier scratch makes for better adhesion uh, in a refinishing situation. Now, the other reason I like it for in a refinishing situation is for tannin bleed. Um, this is the best sealer that I've found besides the poly primer. Um, now there's another, um, there are a couple more um, primers that are out there. Um, Claw Lock by ML Campbell is a good one. And then also the Malaysi um, pre-cap primer is good. Now they also have a pre-cap primer, CIC does too, that you can use. Um, I, it's a little bit, in my opinion, it's a little bit harder to sand. It doesn't sand as easy as this. So that's one reason why I don't really like the pre-cap primers. I've, I've shot the one from Malaysi and it's almost like shooting a top coat. It's so smooth and buttery, um, but it's a little bit on the sticky side and doesn't sand as well. Now, I don't know how the other ones do, but um, you could try them and see. Sand and bleed is a big issue with oak cabinets. 
um, and also contaminants that are in the finish that no matter how well you clean them, you can't get them out. Now, um, greases and things like that, the vinyl sealer does a really good job with. Since I switched to it two years ago, I've only had two instances where I saw any uh, bleed through through the sealer or any tannin issue. And all I did was lightly scuff it and then shoot that spot again and it was gone and it never came back. Um, the other thing I like about it is the speed. 20 minutes and you're ready to scuff and you're ready to put your top coat on. I like to see I see uh, best in a kitchen um, in an in-house situation. The smell is a little bit less and it has a lower um, VOC. It's a 275. And so I went over to it for that. Now I still do use the Exalta from time to time, but I am really giving the CIC a go. And if you want to check out the video that I did on the CIC um, versus the Exalta, that's a good video to watch. And we kind of proved a lot of guys out in California and out that way, since they can't shoot the higher VLC stuff, felt like that you know, because they've taken out the haps and some of the chemicals that it's not as good as a higher VOC product. And we found that that's just really not the case. Um, there are some differences and I talked about in that video. So you want to, you might want to check that out. I like a vinyl sealer better in a white wood application. A lot of the same issues. Um, in a dye situation, um, like if I'm using a water-based dye or a water-based stain or an oil-based stain, let's talk about each one of those. So in a stain situation, why I like the vinyl sealer better. Well, if you're using an oil-based stain or any type of uh, solvent-based stain, wiping stain, spray stain, whatever it is, you can let that dry for whatever the recommended dry time is. Spray your vinyl sealer. In 20 minutes, you can sand your vinyl sealer and you can go straight with your water-based top coat. Now, I'm actually building a chest-on-chest. -chest. Um, it's a 18th century style period and I'm taking a lot of stuff from John Townsend. And um, I'm actually gonna show you some stuff on that, on how I finish a figured wood and what you wanna do and how you wanna do it. Um, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about that. The thing is, is I like it in a new application because, and we're gonna test this theory because I'm not sure if it if it really is true, but there is a better water resistance to a vinyl sealer. It's almost um, like wrapping it in plastic, so to speak. And um, we're gonna test that and see if that, that holds up to, to be true in, a, in, a, in that situation. So. Um, now, if you were shooting like a nitro lacquer or something like that, I would definitely use a vinyl sealer. It's going to help that finish have way more water resistance than if you just shot the lacquer um, by itself. I know a couple guys of you out there that shoot the lacquer. Um, I also would recommend it in a pre-cat situation. Now, I just got some pre-cat today um, for a project just, just for fun and just to test this theory to see if shooting a vinyl sealer actually helps the pre-cat or, or not. Um, we're going we're gonna to actually look at that because most of the precasts now will say they're self-sealing. Did so. a job where I had an issue with the CIC top coat. There was something wrong with the batch and I was getting like, it was like trash or something in it. And what I did was, is I scuffed that water-based top coat down and then I reshot the panels with another coat of the vinyl sealer that was tinted um, to the color, which is another good reason of why it's great to have a vinyl sealer um, that's tinted to the color that you're actually doing it, is you can get out of trouble. Um, so then what I did was I just took it and then I shot two coats of clear over the top of it. Now what's the advantage of that? Well, we, we've seen from some of my other videos that when you put pigments in top coats, it reduces the, makes it thinner. Um, it thins it out and those pigments are soft so it reduces the chemical resistance of the product and I've seen that across the board on pretty much everything is a clear um, 
it doesn't do that. You're getting the benefit of that clear without the pigments in it, so it's going to be a tougher finish. Now, there's a lot of guys that will um, shoot, you know, a coat of vinyl sealer, two coats of pre-cat, and then put a clear on top of it. Or you could do the same thing with water base. Now, let's say that you're in a situation where you're, you, you don't want to use a vinyl sealer and you use the shellac and it was a dark color and all you could do is go gray. Well, what you can do in that situation is, is a great product that sprays really well is the Sherwin-Williams Solo. And it's an exterior, interior latex paint. What you can do is you can take that, um, if you're shooting out of a turbine or an HVLP system, thin it about uh, two to four ounces, depending on your needle and nozzle size, with water, mix it up, and you could spray that as your color coat and then put a clear over the top of that. And that will work the same way as the vinyl sealer. It's just sort of an extra step involved in there. So you've got a coat of shellac, two coats of the Solo, <coughs> two coats of clear. Now, could you get away with one coat of clear? Yeah, maybe. It just depends on how it, how it lays out. Um, so that's what I did there. And so if a lot of guys were confused about that, so it was just sort of a get out of jail situation. Um, now what's the drawbacks to that? Well, the drawbacks are, you know, if you scuff through your, um, your vinyl sealer, then you have to touch it up with your vinyl sealer and then hit it again with the clear. Um, so that's kind of the disadvantage. You know, if you get like a piece of trash or something in it, it's going to stick out more with the vinyl, with the clear over the vinyl sealer than it would if you were putting a tint over it because the tint's going to cover up, you know, say a, a piece of white dust fell down in there or something uh, that was, you know, fell off of, you know, something, then it would cover it up and you wouldn't see it if that makes sense. So I like to use tinted products wherever I can. Um, because it just makes life easy, especially if you have other guys working for you and they're not as careful. Um, so anyway, I think that about wraps it up on why I like a vinyl sealer. Um, and I hope that answers all those questions that a lot of guys have had. Um, you know, if you want to, if you're, if you're like me and you do the in-house stuff, I would give the, um, CIC a shot and see if you like it. Um, everybody pretty much has a vinyl sealer and they're all pretty similar. Um, but I don't know anybody else that has a lower VOC than, than the CIC stuff. So anyway, give the vinyl sealer a shot. See if you like it. And um, make sure you like, subscribe, and if, uh, hit the bell if you want to get the weekly updates on these. And next week, uh, we're going to be talking about water-based primers. Um, I've got a couple here. They didn't fare too well. I'm going to give you a teaser on that. Um, but we're going to talk about that and what I like and what I don't like about it. And we will catch you next week. Thanks for watching.